Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another case study. Right behind me, I have a 2008 Chevy Express van. It's got the V6 engine, 4.3 liter. Customer complaint with this thing is that it intermittently stalls on them when they're driving. Sometimes it just shuts off. Uh, so this is a company fleet vehicle. They're trying to get it back on the road as soon as possible. So first things first, let's go ahead and hook up the scan tool and see if we find any codes. All right guys, so we are inside the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up. Uh, just because I need some AC. It's just really hot outside right now And I'm sorry if the fan is making noise, but man, it is hot. I'm just gonna kind of point these away Anyway, so I got the scan tool hooked up. Let's go ahead and uh, do an automatic selection So we can automatically read the VIN Hit okay Let's go ahead and confirm the vehicle Go to diagnosis Control unit Let's pick the engine control module all right, so we're looking for trouble codes, read codes. We'll look at current and history codes. And now we can just go down the list. Up here at the top, you'll see we have a PO455. That is an EVAP system large leak detected. If you look, next one we have is a PO522. It's for the engine oil pressure sensor circuit low voltage. Uh, next one we have is this uh, brake switch, PO573 high voltage on the brake switch circuit and then if you look down here we have uh, looks like a 5 volt reference circuit code a PO641 that code right there I think is gonna be key to helping us figure out what's wrong with this vehicle because if we have a problem in the 5 volt reference circuit that's definitely gonna cause the engine to stall now the other thing I'm wondering is whether or not we can correlate one of these other codes to this 5 volt reference circuit code so what I mean by that is is it possible that one of these sensors over here is causing this uh, 5 volt reference code to happen? Um, if we look up at the top again, we have an EVAP system large leak code. I don't think that's going to be uh, related to the 5 volt reference code. It may or may not be, but it's highly unlikely. The next one would be the oil pressure switch, which if you ask me, I think it's very likely that this may be our culprit. I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying that there's a high probability that this could be our problem here. We also have this brake switch circuit, but I don't believe that the brake switch circuit is tied into the 5 volt reference. Now I may need to double check the uh, 5 volt reference on the wiring diagram to verify that, but uh, on the oil pressure sensor, if you're familiar with GMs, you'll know that the oil pressure sensors on the GM vehicles are actual pressure sensors. And what I mean by that is that uh, these are three wire sensors. So we're gonna have a 5 volt reference, we're gonna have a ground, and we're gonna have a signal wire. Now take for instance something like a Ford. Ford has an oil pressure gauge on the instrument cluster, but what Ford does differently is that their gauges, if you notice when you're driving a Ford, as long as everything's working properly, the gauge is gonna be in the middle. It's not gonna fluctuate with the engine RPM. Now, if you drive a GM vehicle, you'll notice that as you're driving, like let's say the higher the RPM, you'll notice that the gauge, the oil pressure gauge moves with the engine RPM like it's supposed to because of course the higher the engine rpm the higher the oil pressure you're going to have because the faster you're spinning the oil pump so this gauge actually moves with the oil pressure unlike a ford where it's basically just a on and off switch it only has two wires on the sensor or sometimes only one wire and essentially what happens is that as long as it hits a certain pressure like let's say uh as long as it hits 14 psi of engine oil pressure that switch is going to close and the gauge is always going to stay in the middle now if the pressure falls below the specified amount the 14 psi then the the switch will open and the gauge will fall back down to zero so i don't really know why the manufacturers do it differently like that but if you ask me my opinion is that a lot of drivers get confused when they see the oil pressure uh rising and falling with the engine rpm so i've actually had customers uh send me like videos through text message where they're showing me that the oil pressure gauge is moving up and down and they're wondering if that's normal and i just have to explain to them that yes it is normal unless you see the the pressure drop below the last line then you know you really have an oil pressure problem so hopefully that makes sense to you guys like i said a lot of manufacturers that include an oil gauge like this an oil pressure gauge they don't give you the actual pressure readings they give you something we like to call a dummy gauge which is just there to make the driver happy so anyways like i said if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that that oil pressure switch is tied into the 5 volt reference circuit. And if you look right now, the engine is running, uh, the gauge is reading at zero. So we know that this 
uh, sensor is actually not working. So I think the scan tool has given us a good direction of where to go. It is possible that we have a shorted oil pressure switch, which is causing the vehicle to intermittently stalls whenever it shorts out the 5 volt reference circuit. Again, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the first thing that we should check. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so in order to gain access to the oil pressure switch, which is actually on the back side of the engine, uh, we're gonna need to remove this engine cover, or as I like to call it, a doghouse that's uh, inside of the vehicle here. Now, the only problem is that this is a work vehicle, and it does look like the workers who uh, use this thing just really don't care about keeping it clean or organized. So uh, we're gonna have to kind of push all this trash back so that we can uh, get this cover off. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, just to show you how much trash I'm having to remove from the inside of this thing just to get to the doghouse. Oh, man, I'm gonna have to charge them extra for this. Jesus Christ. What the crap is that? Oh my God, it snakes. Oh, shoot. shit. All right, guys, so I, I did the best I could to try to get this uh, doghouse out of here, but uh, as you can see, they just have way too much crap behind the seats. I can't even push these seats all the way back far enough to get this thing out of there. So we're just gonna have to do with what we got now. I can actually uh, see the oil pressure sensor now. So if you look over here on the back side of the engine, uh, where are you? Right down here. If you look right here, that is the oil pressure sensor. Hopefully you can see what I'm pointing at, that sensor there and the plug. Let me try to get a good view of it. All right, there's our sensor right there. As you can see, our three wire connector is right here. Let's go ahead and pull the wiring diagram and see which one is our 5 volt reference, which one's our signal wire, and which one is our ground. All right guys, so we got the wiring diagram pulled up over here. If you look right over here, you'll see the oil pressure sensor. And like I said, it is a three wire sensor. This tan and white wire is gonna be the signal wire that goes back to the computer. This gray wire is going to be our 5 volt reference voltage feed. And this black wire is going to be the ground. We know that this gray wire is the 5 volt reference because if we follow it back, which let me go ahead and highlight it, and we'll follow it back over here. Number four, let's go to the next page. Find number four on this page here. If you follow it over to the computer, you'll see it says 5 volt reference one. That's our gray wire. That's gonna be the 5 volt reference. So let's go ahead and move back to the sensor and check it out. All right guys, so we are over on the passenger side. Um, I had to just kind of switch this over to this side so that I could get to the back side of the connector. So you can see, I have my back probe on the gray wire, which is our 5 volt reference. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna use the power probe and we're gonna use it to check to see if we have a 5 volt reference on that circuit. So I'm just gonna stick it in there. And we're actually showing a ground there. Let me show you that again. Yeah, so I'm showing zero volts and we're showing a ground. Uh, let me try disconnecting it and get a reading like that. All right, so I've got the plug disconnected. Uh, the engine was still pretty hot, so I had to use a a little pick tool to unplug it but I got the back probe on there still let me go ahead and touch it with the power probe see what we got and we have nothing I'm not showing anything on that wire uh, I think what I want to try to do next is I'm just gonna pull this back probe out and what I want to do is I want to just go on the front side of this plug and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use the power probe tip to very gently touch the uh, terminal here. Um, I'm not gonna push it through. I'm not gonna try to spread open the terminal. I'm just gonna gently touch it to see if we have our five volt ref. So let's go ahead and touch it. As you can see, we have nothing on that wire. We're not showing a five volt reference. So that's probably why this uh, oil pressure sensor is not working. We're gonna have to figure out where our 5 volt reference went. I guess while we're here, we can go ahead and check the other two pins, which is gonna be the ground and the signal. Uh, so let's check the ground, which is this pin right here. We got a good ground. Let's check the signal wire, which I'm showing a ground on that signal wire, but that's probably normal because uh, that's going back to the computer. So let's focus on uh, trying to find out where this 5 volt reference is. And I guess probably the first thing that we could do is try to eliminate uh, maybe a problem in the immediate area right behind the plug. So if we look at the uh, wiring harness here, you'll see that it goes straight into this big uh, bulk harness. But looking around here, I really don't see anywhere where this 
harness is torn open or where we have any frayed wires so far up here it looks pretty good so it doesn't look like there's anything immediately behind the sensor we also have the harness that goes up this way which is probably where our wire runs through because the computer I believe is located up here so this harness probably runs up up and over the engine and runs up there to the computer but I'm just uh, not seeing anything obvious here as far as the wiring well actually what is that see that green wire oh, check that out that green wire right there definitely looks like it's been uh, shorting out on something or uh, I can see some exposed wiring on there let me try to get a closer view of that focus in on that all right I don't know if you can see that there but this green wire down there has got some uh, some exposed wire that looks like it may have been touching somewhere I mean the green wire is not what we're looking for we're looking for a gray wire but if you look at all these other wires they kind of look like they've been through some trauma as well that's really interesting I wonder if this has anything to do with our problem so I guess what I want to do next is I'm gonna go ahead and get my meter and I'm gonna connect it to the uh, 5 volt reference wire at the connector and then we'll try to kind of move this harness around and see if we might have a short or an open somewhere in the wiring harness all right so what I have set up here is uh, I have my back probe on the uh, 5 volt reference wire on the back of the connector here and I just have a lead clipped to uh, my power probe which I'm just going to use the power probe because I already have it here and it's simple to use and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the wiring harness here and uh, if I don't find anything here we're going to move under the hood because let me show you where the computer is actually located that harness runs up and over the engine and the computer is actually located let me get to the other side here over on the driver's side that is the engine computer down there and if you see this wiring harness this big wiring harness runs all the way up and across the engine and it also has a T right here which I believe is where our 5 volt rev wire may go to if I'm not mistaken that harness follows way back there so there honestly can be a lot of different places where we might have a wiring issue I mean I've seen all different kinds of things I've seen wires where they're touching AC lines I've seen wiring where uh, you know it's sitting on the engine and the engine vibrations causing it to uh, fray open you know so there's might be a couple common things I might want to look at you know things like maybe this I see that AC line right here and this wiring harness right here check that out see how did I know that was gonna happen because I've seen this before I don't know I don't know if this is the wiring harness that we're looking for but I've seen this before where the wiring harness is just laying on the AC line and the AC line ends up burning through the wiring which it doesn't look like it did it in this case anyways like I said I'm gonna have my guy inside the vehicle he's gonna be watching this while I move the wiring harness so let me just start by moving the harness around in here like I said I'm just gonna kind of move this around and see if we can regain our 5 volt ref just keep an eye on that meter I'm gonna start moving the wiring harness all right so I've already kind of went through the wiring harness right here and I don't see any uh, 5 volt reference coming and going so I'm gonna go ahead and move under the hood all right so moving back under the hood like I said I have my other guy my helper inside he's looking at the meter so I'm just gonna start moving the wiring harness around and just tell me if you see anything it's gonna start kind of near the computer Wow, take a look at that if you look at the wiring harness that's way back up there above the uh, air intake boot looks like it's kind of squished up against the firewall let me see if I can get a better camera angle of that well that's a tight spot but I don't know if you can see that it kind of looks like the uh, engine is smashing that wiring harness up against the firewall that might be an area of suspect 
All right, guys, so I'm just kind of pulling this harness up, trying to get it up to the front here. Like I said, it's a very tight spot. Just kind of trying to see if I have any uh, damaged wiring here. Looking for anything obvious. Just kind of comb through these wires for a minute here. Sorry about the camera not focusing. It's kind of hard to get a focus on that. I think we're just going to have to remove this uh, air intake. Let's go ahead and pull this thing out. All right. Now, to get a better view of that harness, let's check it out. Ooh, I see something shiny. What is that? Oh. Is that a gray wire? That uh, sure is a gray wire. Look at that. Look at that. Man. How awesome is that? I believe this is our 5 volt reference wire. You can see it's uh, pretty much almost completely separated. If I uh, just kind of pull on it, you'll see that it came apart. So this is why we don't have our 5 volt reference. Let me repair this wire real quick and see if we got our 5 volt reference back. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and solder that wire back together. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna have to kind of extend it a little bit. So I just cut a piece of a 16 gauge wire right here, a few inches in length. That way that wire isn't being stretched. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder this on there. I am back to using my Power Pro butane torch because if you watched the last video, I had a, just purchased a brand new snap-on one. And of course it didn't work. I gave it to my snap-on dealer. He took a look at it, couldn't get it to work either. So he had to send it off to get it repaired. So. It's gonna be another two weeks before I can get that one back, so I'm just gonna to have to stick to using this one. All right, so now we have the wire repaired. Let's go inside and check to see if we have our five volt reference. All right, so moving back inside the vehicle, uh, looking down at the power probe here. Bam, we got it. Hopefully you can see that. Sorry about the glare, it's the flashlight on my phone here. Five volts, we are back in business, baby. Let's plug this thing in and see if the oil pressure switch is working. All right, so now for the moment of truth. Go ahead and start this thing up. Pay attention to that oil pressure gauge. We are back in business. All right, so our oil pressure gauge is now working. As you can see, we're gonna go ahead and put everything back together, take this thing for a drive, and make sure it doesn't stall out anymore. All right, guys, so just to quickly explain to you why I believe this 5 volt reference uh, wire was causing the vehicle to stall is because uh, we knew we had it open in the wiring harness, of course but that wiring harness was rubbing up against the firewall so uh what i believe was happening is that there was moments where the engine was torquing over and that exposed wire was actually touching the body ground and this 5 volt reference even though it's just one wire that goes straight to the uh, oil pressure sensor internally inside of the computer this is one regulator that's actually sharing the same 5 volt reference power feed with other sensors if you look here it's labeled 5 volt reference one well we can go down here and we find this is also 5 volt reference one. And if we follow that wire, that one actually goes up to the camshaft position sensor. So the camshaft position sensor and the oil pressure switch both share the same 5 volt reference. So that's why if this 5 volt reference gets shorted, it can cause the engine to stall. All right guys, so I sent my helper out to go test drive the vehicle. Uh, he's been gone now for about 20 minutes. And uh, he said, so far so good. Everything's working great. The vehicle has not stalled. Uh, the oil pressure switch is still working so i feel pretty comfortable calling it a fix it's time for us to get out of here so we're going to start closing down i will probably test drive the vehicle again in the morning before i deliver it to the customer but i can assure you that if i did post this video the vehicle is fixed anyways i just wanted to conclude with that hopefully you guys enjoyed the video hopefully you guys enjoy the channel if you found this video useful please make sure to hit the like button if you like this content please make sure to check out all my other case studies that i have on my channel if you haven't already done so please subscribe hit that notification bell and once again thank you guys for watching and i hope to see you in the next one